Kelsey comes down the mountain. I'm like, oh, I get a good hug from my boy. <laughs> Me and Connor are down there, Connor Barwin. <laughs> Kelsey comes down, and he looks like when Kelsey's mad and gets a personal <laughs> foul. And I'm like, what's going on? And he comes up, and I go out for the hug, and he's like, don't fucking hug me. He goes, <laughs> he goes you told me this shit was easy. Yeah. This shit was not easy. Welcome back to the Toyota stage, bright and early. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Chris. Hey. I got I got my boys here. I got uh, I got Bo Allen uh, and the man that needs no introduction. Honestly, I would say my most famous friend. Would you say that? <laughs> I guess. Jason Kelsey. Kind of hurts to say it like that. Though. No, it's true though. I don't think that's true. We were with. You know a uh, lot of famous people. No, but not like you now. I mean, right now we walked through the lobby yesterday at Aria. And like my man's, it's my man's grind. commodity. Dude. Yeah, what a guy. How you, how you feeling? Uh, feeling good. Um, happy to be here. It's a fun week. This is probably the best setup you could ask for for something like this. Uh, like seven x my money on the blackjack table yesterday. Yeah, so guys, Kels absolutely good. killed it at the g uh, gambling yesterday. It was insane. That was incredible. So <laughs> Bo was like, "Yo, me and Kelsey are, are at Aria." And I had like two hours, and I go, you know, I'm gonna pop over there. We're yeah. playing tables, and I don't play tables. This is not a, a casino table gambler. Man, when I walked in there, it was like the who's who of like of everybody. It was obviously Kelsey was there, and yes. I told you what a big deal that is. And then Tom Segura, yeah, and Burt Kreischer, yeah, and our boys from Bus and Taylor and Will and. Uh, who else was in there? Baker Mayfield. Baker Mayfield, Mayfield. great guy. Who I love. I love Baker Mayfield, dude. Yes, incredible, I mean, dude. I, I can't say enough good things about this guy, and so happy for him to have this year. Anthony Pettis, w Showtime what? Pettis. I was gambling with him. He was there as well. We had a really fun Anthony time. Anthony Pettis. Yeah. Fire. Who is that? Yeah, fire. That's the guy who was right next. Incredible to guy. I had a feeling that guy could yeah. kick my ass. He was you, badass. You can just tell by looking at the guy's traps and yeah. the way they sit. Yes. They, this dude wrestled before. No question. Yeah. yeah. And you got to look for the call. Exactly. No, Telltale sign. And then. Um, it was electric, too, because Tom was at our table and Bert was at your table. Yep. And we just wanted to make Bert have FOMO. <laughs> so every time anybody won anything, we just yelled as loud as possible. Yeah, and uh, every time we won, we yelled, too. And I didn't do a whole lot of yelling. <laughs> I was over there a little, trying to do a little call back, call back and forth, try to get the juices flowing. Couldn't get anything going to the table. Your boy was down bad. But that was actually a really fun event. Like, Bert was, like, lit up a cigar for me. Like, I haven't smoked a cigar in years. Turns out he's from Tampa. Um, so so like he's from that area. He was talking about like smoking cigars in Ebor City, but it was really fun, man. Dude, honestly. I have no idea how to play any table games, and you guys were like, "Here, take take some." <laughs> Baker Mayfield gave me like three hundred dollars. Yeah. yeah. And I, I felt like a kid, like going over to my dad to get some money <laughs> yeah. for something. And then I went back over and I turned it into like six hundred. There you go. I tried to give it back to Baker. He wouldn't take it. I would have taken it. I know. I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I ended up giving it to Funny Marco. Do you know who that is? No. Did you see that guy, Funny Marco, when he walked in? Yeah, yeah. He's one of the funniest people on the internet. Uh, he actually accepted the $600. Oh, yeah. You took it. I was like, bro, I'm a huge fan. I was like, here's, here's $600. He was like, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> but, but Tom's vodka was good. If anybody gets a it chance, great. it was yeah. really good. Yeah, really good. And I wasn't planning on drinking. I had, I had a little of his vodka. And then you boys ended up. Going to U2 last night. Dude. So these guys are all loaded up record. going to U2. Bo's, having, Bo's in party mode. And I was I was having a good time. <laughs> Bo was having a good time. They go to U2 at the Sphere. I'm super jealous. I want to ask you about the Sphere. But first, I want to ask you what it's like when you show up to a suite and Bo's in party mode. And you realize that my parents are in the same suite. Pop along. <laughs> so, like, you had no idea. Well, okay, let me just preface this, Chris. I've been excited about going to YouTube at the Sphere for months. It's been, like, this thing I've, this week that I've been biggest bucket list item. Like, just, you know, YouTube Bono, the whole, you know, circus, the the 
the lights, the visuals, everything like that. I've been stoked about it, talking about it nonstop. We went back to Kelsey's room to recharge for a little bit before we went there, and I've left my phone charging in his room, so I couldn't even document it. And I walk that's in. That's good, though. You don't want to be the guy that's like this the whole time. You're, I was analog. It was awesome. Yeah. Not only did he leave your phone, the only – he had an actual disposable camera. I haven't seen one of those that's all I have. in yeah. years. Yeah, yeah, one of, the, one of those bad boys. He had yeah. to conserve. He had to be very – uh, you know, specific in his choices of photography. There's no way those pictures limited. came out good when they oh, made disposable cameras. That's kind of the fun of it, though. They weren't capable of, <laughs> yeah. of capturing the sphere, dude. Yeah. So, well, we walk in and, like, I didn't know anyone there besides Kels and Emily and Porter, who we went with, and just like a beacon in the light. Your mom walks in and was just just great energy, has having such a fun time. As soon as I got a picture that you were with my mom, I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> the, and Chris, you said Chris Rock. Adam Sandler and who else was in there? Uh, dude, uh, Bob Odenkirk. Uh, they were so they were in the the box right now. Odenkirk was, a, was there. Yeah. It was yeah. There was a star-studded did cast. You did you talk to Odenkirk? Dude, I met a couple of them and I was I haven't been starstruck. You know, I haven't been starstruck in a very long time. Yeah. I didn't know how to react to eating to meeting all of these like icons. Yeah. From comedy legend 20 30 years yeah you i mean know? it's you don't get starstruck i get starstruck sometimes i that i was definitely starstruck then i didn't i was speechless i didn't know what to say and yeah. it was you, you did great uh, kels <laughs> it was cool you did great <laughs> all right so so the sphere talk to me about the the experience like kelsey where's the best seat in the sphere do you think it was in the suites or somewhere else yeah i think great it was setup. our seat i'm not gonna we be, had really? a great setup so you don't want to be too low because that thing's huge so you, they said going in, you want to be 200 level, and we were like right at the 200 level, yep. like right underneath it. So. Right in front of Bono. He was singing directly to me all night. Did you see the guy that climbed the sphere? No. You didn't see this? <laughs> Regular dude decided to climb the sphere the other day, how got all go? the way to the top. What do you, how do you do that? There's nothing to grab onto, right? Yeah, but he did it. He scaled like the suction, suction cups. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. And then he got arrested. Specter gadgeted it. Yeah. He got promptly arrested. But yeah. it, I feel like it's worth it. I mean, <laughs> listen. To get to the top of the sphere. Yeah. Probably doing, you know, a couple hours right, right now. Yeah. Like, so we were talking about this backstage. <laughs> if we could rent the sphere out yeah. and we could bring, like, Lane and maybe somebody else, and it's just us, yeah. um, and we could put whatever we wanted on the big screen. What do you guys want to do? What do you want to watch? I, Planet Earth. Oh, yeah. Like some Jane Goodall. Dude, I want to see the best. So, first of all, so those of you that have not been to it and seen the videos online, I mean, does not do it justice. And yeah. that's a very overused phrase. I thought I was prepared a little bit. Th yeah. This was the most intense overwhelming sensory overload highly stimulating i mean it is massive they start spinning it you're getting motion sickness yeah. just sitting there oh you get motion sickness i never get motion. i do i go on any roller coaster anything they started spinning this thing like it was like a, almost like a film print like yeah yeah anyways it was very intense. Bono, but Bono was spinning on, on stage over and over again, around and around on this little pedestal, completely unfazed, just belting out songs. I think they know that He it's was really spinning. Incredible. Spinning. I think they know that it's too much, so they take a break about 45 minutes yeah. into it, an hour. And when they came back, it was all uh, just what the strip looks like. It was like an outdoor look at the strip, outdoor look at Vegas, <laughs> these beautiful scenic views and it feels like you're there yeah it, it was really really cool that was my favorite part yeah well, so to answer your question though chris you I'd, got a good answer so i i would want to go i wouldn't want to watch a movie i'd want to play video games i'm a video game guy yeah. but like classic like n64 like Ooh. mario kart or like blitz. drunk driving and yeah nfl blitz 2000 <laughs> or like super smash bros oh it'd be incredible with your guys on there like it'd be incredible so fun man like imagine uh -huh. hooking up the little uh you know you plug in an n64 and you have like the white the yellow Yellow yeah. and yep. the red little analog things, just plugging that into the sphere. <laughs> turn oh, yeah. Play, turn yeah, the sphere a little plug right behind where Bono is. <laughs> you got to turn the sphere to channel three. You know? um, Original Halo. Yeah. So we. Oh, so yeah. you had a good idea. You, yeah. Kelsey, you and Trav had a good idea. It went viral. You guys were talking. And I never played this game growing up. Backyard football. So there's backyard football and backyard baseball. Did you play this? Yeah. Did I miss my childhood? Dude, it's such a fun probably, game. Am I too old? Hopefully you were outside and you weren't doing I that. I was outside. Yeah. That's what it was. <laughs> yeah. But, so what's the deal with this game? Um, it's, I think it was just really popular when we yeah. were growing up, and it's got a cult following. Yeah. Everybody loved playing it. Uh, it didn't have like the NFL teams, but it had likeness. So well, Drew Bledsoe was you know, in it, right? That's what I'm saying. It had yeah. players, but yeah. it didn't have the 
Like, you didn't have Patriots or, like, the yeah. Eagles. Like, so, you're just on, like, a weird-looking team. Yes. But, but you got Drew Brees. It was, you would play with, like, a, a child version of all the stars in the NFL. But the thing about awesome. this. Oh, so you look like kids. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. But, a, but the thing about this game, dude, is, like, it's beautifully simple. So, like, all these games from, like, back in the day on the N64, like, early computer games. Yeah. Like, they're just, like, simple. You know what I mean? Minimal buttons. Yeah. yeah. So, you, you it, in, for, in my opinion, it forces the user to be more creative. So, you have to, like, juke somebody with, like, the arrows on the on the keyboard. Okay. Instead of, like, a circle button. You know what I mean? So well, that's what Madden's turned into. I know. I picked up Madden for the first time much. in 12, 15 years. <laughs> yeah. the other, like, a couple weeks yeah. ago. No, it is not, dude. Right. It's not too much. It, what? It is amazing. <laughs> the, I don't it's think. awesome, dude. You can run RPOs. You can you can you can run speed options like you can yeah. every hot route. It's not just go route. Can you run tush out. pushes, Chris? You can run slants, fades, huh? Can you run a tush push? <laughs> you can't run the tush push. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how does that feel? It, how does it feel? Like, like my physically pushed? Because we got Devonte on later. Nice. And I thought awesome. I heard him liking awesome. it to being like in like he can't breathe for a while in there. Like when there's the pile, there's yeah. some guys in there. Well, he's that, pretty. Well, he's little. He's slim, slender. Yeah. But like I can imagine not being able to breathe. If you're at the bottom of the pile, it can get a little claustrophobic in there yeah. for sure. It's it's not a high impact. Yeah. Like it's not a violent play. <laughs> yeah. But it's a grueling play. You know. Because you're 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 fighting for leverage initially. Yeah. And then you just. The, the whole mode is to grind it. You're just keeping your f feet moving. You're pushing. The people behind you are pushing. They're pushing. The people behind them are pushing. Yeah. So it's a exhausting play, yeah. but it's not like a painful play, if that makes sense. No, I mean, I get it. I get it, unless you're like Devontae Smith. I, I, I could see I'd be painful. And then you get like flattened like a pancake in there. The, the only thing I've really gotten close to getting hurt, I, was, I, don't, I try and put my hands down while I'm doing it. Yeah. And one time somebody fell onto my elbow. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That can like be bad. Miniature, and I already got a crappy elbow. Yeah. So it doesn't want to go straight. And yep. Just went to straight. I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Kels, I love watching you emerge from the bottom of the pile after a tush push. And it's like, you know, in Game of Thrones, that one episode, like Battle of the Bastard, where Jon Snow is like crawling out of <laughs> all the army, like the people in the army. I'll send it to you. But like, that's what it reminds me of. And just look, the look on your face as you're crawling out of the, the bottom of the pile after a tush push is just. Here's what I, I here, think about that a lot. Because how do you stop that as a nose guard, man? There's nothing you well, can do. Well, Vita Vea. Tampa Bay stopped. Vita I know, Vea. Yeah, no, that was Greg Gaines. Was that all Vita that was Greg why, Gaines, bro. Why were they able to he, he stop it? He did a good job, but uh, I don't know who it was on the right. He did a great job of getting skinny and kind of grabbing Jalen initially. That's what you got to do. An off well, you can't right. tell the secret. It's hard. Yeah, I mean, I don't know that there's any one way to stop it because there's different ways to set the point of attack and apex. I think that you, you, you have to try and take off double teams on the play. Yeah. Right? In my opinion. Or gap it all out. And if yeah. you're going to gap it all out, you probably go to pushers behind them, like yeah. the old field goal block. Yes. You know, when they used to just put in that yep. kind of outlawed? Yep. Um, they allow it on that play to even the playing field. Yeah. Um, I think you, that's what you have to do. The problem with that is if we aren't running it, you are – Well, you guys have been running great counters off of it too. The counters always work because yeah. the only way to There's stop – There's so many numbers inside. Yeah, you want to stop the play, you have to overload the point of attack inside. Yeah which makes you susceptible on the edge or for a pass. So I wish we did probably more counters at this point. Yeah. But it's hard to do a counter when you know you're going to convert right. over 90% It's, it's of your time. bread and butter. Yeah, I mean, you know? the, the analytics behind it are like, this is a no-brainer. Well, it was, it was interesting because we were with Drew Brees last night in the suite, yeah. and we were talking about – this play from a quarterback's perspective. Oh, from backyard football, Drew Brees. <laughs> no, he, <laughs> I think he was. He probably was. No, he, it was. It was Drew Bledsoe, backyard football. But anyway, yeah. he used when I was in Tampa. He was with the Saints, and they used to run a very similar play where he would take it. Like he scored on this on the in the goal line twice. Yeah, he would take it and then just elevate the ball over the top. Yes, yep. real quick every time. It was. It and was, pull it back in and then pull it back in. He used to do that all the time, and it's the same philosophy as the touch push. You know? The problem is they didn't always do that quarterback sneak and they were under center a lot more like for us we don't do a lot of under center stuff right in the moment it's a short yard situation Jalen's under center right that middle linebacker is trying to jump over and yeah. time the snap yeah we actually who like were playing that old Troy uh, Polamalu shit I forget who we were playing late oh the Giants dude jumped over yeah like early right yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah so like they're trying to time it so it's hard to like reach 
Yeah, and, and then the you know the interior defensive linemen are trying to time it too, like the dude from the Bills. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I, have, I, I overreacted to that a little bit. But can I? Can I? Tough play for a, for a Can tackle. I sell my idea that I had off backyard football? I, Let's go. You're thinking about the kid versions of these players. Yes. How about? A real league for for older football players, and they play tackle football. I'm in. Tell me that would not like this, obviously. Th that sounds are, perfect for people that never want to retire. There are waivers Chris. that people would have to are sign. Some of former NFL players are just older. I'm people. talking about former NFL players. You, I can't play. To you. That's like, what makes it great. <laughs> that's why everybody retires. You can't play. Anymore. But what did you just say? I can't do it. <laughs> I, I wait. Does I that, retire, does I that tell you it's, something? It's, it's, like, I can't I it. it's the I perfect retire. league for people that just can't hang it up. You know. But think about it. There's a of got, and the unpredictability of it because Jerry Rice might have been Jerry Rice, but how is he doing it 56 yeah. years it's old? Like we pros don't know. Versus Joe's. So gambling on it will be really hard. Who's yeah. got the real longevity here? You could do pay per view stuff. You know, like it's like you assemble a team, you call out another team. Yeah. Remember what? during the pandemic, they would do these rap battles, <laughs> yeah. that, like on Instagram, <laughs> where it was like they just pop up and yeah. somebody would profit off it, like, you know, in an individual sense. The same thing could happen for like pickup, washed up hey, I'll, football. I'll tell you who I want on my team, Howie Long. No, dude, that's that the thing. Howie Long think. looks great on the outside, but on the inside, Howie Long feels terrible. He'd give you two snaps. Howie looks like, what are those, like Kia? He's just a box. Yeah, he looks His, like an Autobot. He's the most geometric He looks like an Autobot. Yeah, that's a great an way to He does, dude. Yeah. His head is a perfect... Trap is not a Decepticon. And, 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 dude, his hair just stands up perfectly every day. It was impressive. I Every time I see him, and I haven't seen him in a long time, it's jarring. How his, big he is. Yeah. And just how, like, solidly built the cat is. But yeah. also an unbelievable guy, Chris. He saved our lives on, uh, on Flathead, remember? He did. So the story <laughs> is, well, he saved our lives, and then he saved me and Lane's life. Yeah. <laughs> He also big rescue so that he's he loves doing lake rescues. Yeah, and we're trying to get Kelsey out to Montana one of these years. But Bo comes out every couple of years, and uh, you know we we rip it up for a couple of days, and we take the whaler out, which is a little boat. It's fun. Um, yo, dude, there's Ocho. I beat that hey! guy. In I beat that guy in Madden. What up? I beat that guy in Madden. <laughs> No, you're good, bro. Anytime. Interrupt anytime. Anytime you want to come sit, we'll pull up another chair. It's my favorite dude in the world. What a guy. I, I fucking love you, man. I fucking love you. I love you. I love you, Ocho. Ocho Cinco, everybody. Dude, working with him on Inside the NFL is it's, so, it's incredible. When I was at University of Cincinnati and he was still with the Bengals, yeah. he came out to a practice and was just like showing guys. And it was... You know, when you're in college, you think you're with high-caliber athletes. Yeah. It was insane to see how quickly he could change direction, run all the routes. Yeah. He was dicing everybody up. But uh, you know what the cool like, thing about him? Printed in my head. The cool thing about him is, like, he's a triple OG to me. The guy's, like, in his 40s, although he looks like 30. Incredible. He looks fantastic. He looks fantastic. He dresses fantastic. He looks way better than I do. But he treats me, you know, like, like we're teammates. You know, it's like he's a great teammate. You know, like yeah. we didn't know each other at all. And uh, whether it's him or Ryan Clark, you saw Ryan yesterday, Ryan, yeah. or Channing Crowder, who's awesome, Jay Cutler, yeah. been a lot of fun. It's been a fun show. But back to Montana, me and Lane getting this little whaler, and the ass end of the boat starts sinking because of Lane, and we had too much beef in there. Um, and the thing's got like six inches of water, and it's turning into a foot. So I, yep. what do I do in situations like this? I call my dad. Put your life jacket on. And dad comes out there in his big-ass cobalt. He almost sinks us with his wake. You know, he's definitely, like, proud of the <laughs> boat. Trying to flex on like, you a little bit. <laughs> one time we had these vets in because we do Conquer and Killy, which, which Kelsey's Gosh, done. A couple Bo's of the done. guys, you were Fred, a couple of the guys so all the, on our trip. All these guys are, all these guys, <laughs> all these guys are at Jimmy. All these guys are out there. <laughs> and I didn't realize that we were over capacity. Yeah. And the boat starts sinking. And I'm thinking, fuck, man, these vets, they've survived all types of crazy shit. <laughs> and they're going to die in my boat on Flathead Lake. <laughs> you should have seen how quiet this it got. Gonna go down. At a reunion for a veteran deal that we're, like, supposed to be helping the vets. And, like, I'm taking them out in the boat. And there's all the water start to rise and start yeah. pouring out of different parts of the boat. And it got so quiet on the boat. I just look at Chris and we're just like. Call dad. Fuck. Call dad. Yeah. He's there in five By the minutes. way, that Killy trip has yeah. turned into the greatest. First of all, the experience itself. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. And meeting all the guys and everybody. Yeah. 
the gear you had to get, I still, that gear is held up. Yeah, dude. It's yeah. the best gear I yeah. have. Yeah. The shoes I climb Mount Kilimanjaro with are my walking, anytime I got to walk, I wore them to Disney The Moabs? World. The Merrill Moabs? Dude, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, but then you end up with the gloves and the balaclava, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, I have things I can do outdoor exactly. shit. Yeah. So the, so conquering Kelly, we do it for water boys. We have veterans and, and athletes up to climb Kilimanjaro, and we raise money for clean water, and Kelsey and Bo have been kind enough to donate nine days of their life. True. And uh, possibly an untold amount of damage yeah. to their bodies because it, this it, is a grind, dude. It is a grind. And you didn't warn me, and I still kind of harbor that against you. This is my favorite Kelsey story, bro. <laughs> the only time me and Kelsey have ever, like, <laughs> bickered, been at each other. Yeah. You know, like, and we both have short fuses, I guess, at times, but it's fair. But we never argue. <laughs> and uh, we were up on Kelly, and we get to the top. We have Haloti Nada, Bo, a couple three, 330 pounders. I was going 335 almost. pounds when I started that climb, and I was 305 pounds when I finished it. Just you lost you know. tw- how much? 30 pounds. That, you legit. I weighed it. myself in the hotel after. They well, had the scales in the they had scales room. in the hotel room. The funny thing about that trip was there was a battle between Bo and Haloti, <laughs> like because Bo, Bo's sensitive. He is. And I'm Bo, emotional. Bo is an Eeyore. He's <laughs> he is an Eeyore. He needs the. I'm, con- yeah, he's I'm a poo. All right. Dude, he's so an Eeyore. I'm a poo. Everybody was giving Haloti the credit for being the heaviest guy they've ever seen climb the mountain. This is amazing, and Haloti. Bo is like five pounds less than Haloti. <laughs> And he's getting no love, and no he's love. just getting increasingly furious, but not saying anything because he's too good of a dude mm. to take the shine off of Haloti, who's probably one of the most unbelievable guys ever. Haloti is one of my favorite players he's of all great. time, by the way. Like, nice I, cover. I fucking love him. Nice cover just, for you being making, jealous of him. All hail all God. comments on the side, like, uh, the, 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 the mountain. We great did job, Haloti. Oh, in the back. Let me go in scarf the, down the, some soup at this fucking camp so I can be the biggest guy on the mountain by the time I get He was trying to carb load to outweigh Haloti. Eating beef jerky. Anyways, like, people would be like, great job. Job, Haloti, can't believe you're doing this. So Haloti had this little flag in his backpack that he was yeah. going to retire on top, on of, top Kelly. of Kelly. So, like, of course, we're giving him a little extra TLC, but Bo can't fucking handle it. <laughs> Couldn't handle it. You know, Bo's, uh, Bo's in the back, like, they're only talking about Haloti. Oh. <laughs> Why are they, he's only five pounds heavier than me. Hey, let's not distract. Good job, Hol- Holody, legend. Yeah. All hail Holody. And so we get to the top. By the way, like everybody summits at different times. I make the mistake when I get over the rim of the volcano at like 18.5. I say, I'm with you the whole way, bro. He's struggling. Yeah. So I keep my promises, man. Yeah. And he did not make it when everybody else made it no. like this way. Well, it's so funny how we're all like. You know, it's a team effort on the way up, like pole pole, like we're all kind of climbing in tandem, like doing all the switchbacks. And then that was frustrating. It's <laughs> so, bro, I remember <laughs> we're, we're, we're doing the switchbacks. I was ready to abandon the team. The <laughs> right. so, so it's the middle of the night to set the stage. You get up to the last so camp. so dark. Like it is obviously there's not like any light pollution. No light pollution. So it is so dark, you can't see without a light on anything. It's like pitch black. You, you know, certainly can't see bl- where you're going. The no. blackest of black. And it was, it was actually probably good we did it at night because yeah. it would have it would have looked crazy to try and climb something that high and steep yeah. if there was light. The last 2,500 feet from the last camp to the top feels like forever. And then, like, it's in the darkness of night, so we get up there in the Yo, middle of the, the day. the stars. We take, yeah. a, we take a nap, and then at midnight they wake you up, and they say, we're going to the top. And all you can see is other people's headlamps. Yeah. Yep. And they're very deceptive. So you think you're at the top. You're playing mind games the whole night. Yeah. Yep. You get Get up the top. I gotta push Haloti like a Ford Ranger. <laughs> like I'm like no, you're doing, doing sled pushes all I'm the way up. This. Yeah, I'm sled it pushing. It was an impressive performance, mate. So we get we get done. Haloti's like oxygen, the whole thing. They got him on a cart like an emperor. The Haloti mobile. They six dudes from Tanzania are like they came to work in the morning. They're like, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna guide some fucking westerners up the mountain. They're gonna be 170 pounds. They're gonna be mount. Nope. We have to get a gurney for a 350-pound man and man wheel him down the mountain yeah. to the next. So we're all they waiting. were unfazed too. We're all waiting at the tent. No, they were they were phased. <laughs> they were pissed <laughs> off. They were pissed. So I'm waiting outside the tent, <laughs> and I'm wait. You know, we're kind of welcoming guys face. back, and we're like, "Hello, to you, you're okay." Bo's in the corner. He's pissed off. Oh, I was throwing up on my shoes. Puking. He's throwing up on his shoes. We're laughing at him. Kelsey comes down the mountain. I'm like, "Oh, I get a good hug from my boy." 
Me and Connor are down there, Connor Barwin. <laughs> Kelsey comes down, and he looks like when Kelsey's mad and gets a personal foul. <laughs> and I'm like, what's going on? And he comes up, and I go out for the hug, and he's like, don't fucking hug me. He goes, <laughs> he goes you told me this shit was easy. Yeah. This shit was not easy. There was nothing easy. And, and, and so we're arguing in the tent, and I'm like, well, just, you know, I go around the room, I'm like, did you Google this trip? Did you Google this trip? Connor, did you know it was going to be hard? He's like, yeah, Kelsey, I knew it was going to be hard. You know, it's a 20,000-foot mountain. Well, Kelsey and I also trained really hard for it. Uh, we spent the week before Achille in Hawaii. Yep. Did a really, yeah, did a really I bet you trained, trained really, really hard in Hawaii. <laughs> yeah. I bet well, you the idea was, like, we were trying to um, – you know, get as much oxygenation as possible into our bloodstream. It was smart. Dehydrate so let's go to a, a Pacific pocket. island. That's we wanted to go like to fire. the lowest possible sea level area where there's as much oxygen. You want to shock Just your body. Saturate our system. You want to shock Just your body. Like yeah. oxygen load. Yeah, it worked well. Kyle. Yeah, yeah, you guys did great, man. Yeah. It was awesome trip. Thanks. I, I did good. I did good, Chris. Huh? I did good. You did awesome, Thanks, bro. Man. You did awesome. Even though on the way back you were puking on your shoes. Yeah. Uh, and, and upset with us. Let's talk some Super Bowl stuff. Let's talk about it. Love it. Uh, so it's Kels. Obviously, the three of us were on the Eagles uh, in Min in Minnesota when we won the Super Bowl. Good times, Kels. I see you got your ring on. I actually Facetime Chris. I was like, Hey, are you gonna wear your ring out to the Super it Bowl? And he's like, No, no, Me? I'm not doing it. I'm not wearing my ring. I never. Well, first of all, he has two. True. But also, I if you're Jason, you're like, Why they won the Super Bowl? True. What are you doing? The only reason. No, but I'm saying, like, you're like at least a fifth of why they won the Super Bowl. If me and Bo wear our rings out, it's like, oh, cool. We were in the team picture. Look at these guys with their rings. Dude, I. Bro, I had like three assisted tackles that game, bro. Come on. I'm doing a podcast with the guys that I won the Super Bowl with. Oh, you have a podcast? No, but like it makes sense yeah. for you to wear your ring and the Rolex. Yeah. Like you playing poker He's with the ring. Do you don't have your Rolex either? No, I didn't bring it, but it's dope. I don't like losing. Let's talk about, the, talk about the Rolex, uh, Kels, because I get a lot of questions about this, and honestly, this is like probably one of my favorite I, yeah, okay, things. So, the story behind it is, is awesome. So Super Bowl rings aren't fun to wear. First of all, you feel kind of like a douche a little yeah. bit, I feel like. When That's you're what I mean. It, yeah. It, yeah. it feels like you're like, oh, look at me. I won a Super Bowl. Like we get it. Yeah. Um, the, but, and they're also really big and clunky. Like, it's already giving me a blister on my finger. They're not comfortable. Yeah, you get a blister. So we all decided, along with a couple other guys on the team, let's just have Rolexes made w commemorating the Super Bowl. Well, you were shit-talking everybody that was wearing all these fancy watches. I don't, you're like, it's a bracelet. Like, why would you ever wear a, I'm not a, big a watch fancy bracelet? You're right. But yeah. I, I feel like if there's one time to wear a fancy. It pairs good with the Carhartt. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Rolex and Carhartt. Blue collar look. Is there anybody else in the state of Nevada that has Carhartt and a Rolex on right now? And sandals. And sandals. Nobody on and nobody in America. Uh, but Kels, the best thing about the the watch is that you know Selleck gets so excited about something. Yeah. You have no option but to just ride his wave and get sure. it. Sure. But he was right. Equally, he was. 100% right. But Selleck is so juiced about something, and like, it's like this childlike enthusiasm that you have no option but to just like, yeah, I'm on board, man. And so Selleck kind of spearheaded the whole thing. Yep. It's fun because you have one. They got the dog one. mask on the I inside, dude. It's easily my favorite bracelet I own. <laughs> um, yeah, favorite bracelet. So, you know, Eagles fans want us to ask you about the Eagles this year. Like, I, I dude, I felt for you. Like, you know, we're boys, and like, I'll text to check in, but I hate I hate doing that, especially now because I'm in the media and it's like, am I fishing for like why things are going wrong and shit? So like, I'll text you every once in a while, but yeah. there's nothing I can say. It was like me talking about texting you the night where I'm not sure if you're retiring and the whole world's not sure. Like, what can I tell you as your boy? Yeah. How hard was was that, man? Because you've been here. You were here a year ago. We've won it. You guys start so hot. It's almost like you guys set yourself up for an unrealistic kind of standard with that start. Well, yeah, I mean, I think we had a yeah. Obviously, we had a great start to the year, and to f fizzle out like that is really difficult. Um, I don't know that the expectations were like un, I guess, uh, unattainable or like too high. But you know, we just I don't know. There was a lot of things that led to it. Obviously, the schedule was really difficult in the way it happened. Um, injuries timed up, and then we, it just felt like it was one thing after the other. And a lot of times it didn't coincide with what happened before. Like, we play San Fran, offense doesn't move the ball very well, but it's not blitz. Then we feel like we're getting the offense figured out, and then we play Wink Martindale in New York, and it's like we can't execute against the blitz to save our life. So I think 
you know, it's hard to really put your finger on it. We all tried to get it fixed and it never really worked. And I think now they'll have more time as a coaching staff to really look uh, reflectively at, you know, what they could have done or what we could have done as players better and move forward. I think I think they'll have it figured out much better next year. But it's also hard for the staff. You just pointed it out to come off a Super Bowl where you don't have as much time to prep for the next season. I mean, it's hard for the yeah, players. Whenever, I mean, it's hard to go back to the Super Bowl. That's why it's impressive that Kansas City's back here again. Um, you know, the last team to repeat has been uh, the Patriots, right? Yeah. So. You know, you have a shortened off season. Usually when you're in the Super Bowl, you're going to have new coordinators. You're going to have a lot of new staff members. So there's – Your key it, players it, it will feels, leave in free agency because they've played well yeah. to get you to a Super Bowl. Or not even the key players. Yeah. The guys that really end up making a meaningful difference. Yeah. You didn't know they were – guys, but, like, you think, hey, you know – you don't know until they're gone how much they actually like a Patrick Robinson. Patrick like Robinson when he left the year like after. Selleck or yeah, Bo Allen. Selleck, Bo. Uh, Thanks. TJ Thanks. Edwards this last year. I yeah. thought TJ was a guy that was really really smart and um, not to. I mean, listen, I think he's a special player and had a great year in Chicago. And yeah. I think it's it's hard. I mean, Isaac Sayumalu. Yeah. We knew he, it was yeah, going to be dude. difficult. Yeah. I we everybody in the old line room n- knew how great he was, but it's just hard to keep guys around. Everybody's going to get paid. Yeah. When you everybody plays well, so. Um, anyways, those are a lot of excuses. I still think we could have done better. But they're better. all real. It's yeah, real. No, like absolutely. when you're on a team that's struggling, people think you can just flip the switch or it's all mental. Like, and there is a mental aspect of it. And I wonder, you know, how much of it was was this this year where it's like. When things go wrong on a team yeah. enough, people start expecting them to go wrong. And you start sure. feeling yeah. like, in this situation, what's the thing that's going to pop you, up? And you're doing your best to snap people out of that. Everybody yeah. is, right? Yes. Like, you're trying, like, you know, you'll flip out in practice just to, like, try and snap something. And then you? Say, yeah. <laughs> Which you'll, seems like it's supposed to work, right? You, know, you, you go out and you're like, hey, we're all going to go out to a team dinner. And we're going to, like, you, you do things to try and snap it. You try things a little bit different offensively or defensively to, you know, maybe we can, like, get out of this. And it just felt like we, we, we never could catch up with it this year. I mean, yeah. that's what it felt like. And at each step, we thought we were going to get it, and then it would be another one. And that was – I mean, it was one of the roughest stretches in my career. Yeah. I mean, losing six or seven games – that is that's a that's a tough stretch no matter how you start well it's just a reminder because you were you were helpful to me when i retired you know and you, you people are hey is jason coming back is he not I, I i i think and i said this on my show this show when people are asking me what do you think jason does i said jeff fisher told me something that i always remembered and it's don't retire in a j month yeah don't retire in january don't retire in June or July. Mm-hmm. In January, it's too fresh. You don't know really who, who you are at that moment. There's yep. too much baggage from the season. Your body feels terrible. And then don't do it in July because you're you're probably running away from camp. At that yeah. Point. <laughs> um, yeah. But, but I, I think, you know, that's the risk. You know, when people are like, hey, come back for another year. It's not like the NBA where you get to come back for another year and get on a bunch of flights and hang out with your boys and it's yeah. basketball. And if you're losing – when you lose in the NFL, it's demoralizing. It's emasculating. Truly. It's it's it ruins your mental. So much of what makes football fun is the camaraderie behind yeah. it. Is is the togetherness? Yeah. Is, is winning and executing with your teammates. So regardless of how you're performing individually, it's not fun when you're not winning. And it, that's it the is, risk. That's yeah, the risk of sure. coming back. You're like, well, yeah, I could come back and we could do what we did last year, and it could be like everything could fall fall in place. Yeah. When I came, when I almost came back in 19, I came into Jim Schwartz's office. We had a three-hour meeting, yep. and I decided not to play again. You yep. know this whole yes, story. I do. Yep. But a year later, I'm like, boy, I'm glad I didn't come back. Yeah. Because 2019 was rough as a as a friend and a fan, and it was terrible. Yeah. You know, like you just never know what the next year is going to be. So I, bad. I guess for people wondering. How are you feeling about the whole thing? And you don't know yeah. anything, do you? You're still trying to figure it out. I'll say this. I, I feel really confident that the Eagles are going to be good next year. Yeah. I still think they have great talent. I still think they have great coaches. They've added two new coaches and yeah. Kellen Moore. And, well, I don't even know. Is Kellen officially? I think he's Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. he's there. Yeah. Uh, so, Kellen and Vic are obviously really talented, well-respected coaches. So, they're going to have a whole offseason to figure out what's stalled out, what they can do to improve it. And with not just the coaches, but all the people in that building, I really think uh, they're going to come back with a vengeance. I think Jalen Hurts is going to have a tremendous year next yeah. year. Um, I, I am very confident 
the Eagles are going to be very, very good. So I'm trying not to let that affect what's happening because I really want the decision of whether I'm going to play to just be based on you. whether I want to do it. They, selfishly, I need to make that decision of can I commit, can I mentally be there, and do I want to like endure that again. Um, winning helps that, but I, I think that – you know, you, you're trying to not factor that in, I guess, in the decision. Well, and Kels, we've talked about this a lot. I mean, you you are somebody that has put so much of yourself into not only, you know, the Philadelphia Eagles organization, but the city itself, too. I yeah. feel like there's everybody in the city of Philadelphia sees a lot of themselves in Jason Kelsey. And it's hard to, you know, think about not having that anymore. So I think you got to find ways to stay involved one way or the other, whether it's, you know, still playing or, or, or something beyond that. Luckily, there's the podcast where I'll still be able to stay a connection with the fans. But there is something very, um, I don't know, there's a feeling that you get, I think, the closer you get to stop playing, that you really start to grasp, you know, what the team and the organization means to the fans and to the city. and what an honor it's been to, to, to be able to go out there and represent the city. Yeah. And um, you, you grasp it when you're younger, but the more you play, especially in one area, yeah. and the more people tell you that when you're walking down the street, uh, the more I think you realize that that is something that you're, you're you know, everybody is going to miss when they stop. Yeah, and, and I think for somebody like me or Bo, who hadn't played in Philly their whole career, right. when we get there, it's obvious. Yeah. But for guys that have been there their whole career, it's all they know. Yeah. It's not like that other places. Right. And so, I guess my question without asking you, are you retiring? Because that's the dumbest question because of what I just said. <laughs> Don't retire in a J month. He's not going to do it here in front of a Tacoma. <laughs> all right? Um, not a Toyota. If you're going to do it in front of any truck, do it in front of a Toyota, but you're not doing it. Um, what excites you about the prospect of retirement whether it's this year or next year or two years yeah. from now because I remember towards the end of my career I was fantasizing about like what life's like without this burden you know because it is an awesome honor and a privilege but it's also man this this business will wear you down and it's all you know and the other side you're like is the grass greener I got all these ideas of things I want to do what are those things for you um, you know, obviously, the podcast with Trav is doing well, and I want to keep doing that. Um, it's it's exciting to think about possibilities, but it's waking also up, waking up not sore. It's, it's exciting to be able to yeah. you know lose weight, feel good, and not have to like physically fight for my life every day. <laughs> yeah. um, but. I think um, it's also daunting, and it's 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 anxiety, and you you at the end of the day, it's the unknown. Yeah. And I tell us all the time, like people are like, you know, do you get nervous for games? The only games I get nervous for are like the first time I'm doing something. So like yeah. my first game in the NFL, nervous is all get out, yeah. right? Because you don't know what's in store. Um, the first time you're playing a premier player, you're a little bit more nervous. You're ancient. Like first time I'm playing Dexter Lawrence, I'm like, yeah. This it looks pretty good. It's pretty good. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm a little nervous. I got, but so, and ironically, sometimes it makes you play better. I feel like because yeah. it like makes your senses alive. Yeah. Yep. But um, that's kind of where it's at when you start thinking about retirement. You know, yeah. there's it's exciting. There's there's the possibilities. I mean, you can. You, all of us were fortunate. We can go in a lot of different areas, right? right? And I think. That's exciting, but it's also very nerve-wracking because at the end of the day, you don't know. You don't know what you're going to like until you're doing it. You don't know what you're going to get fulfillment in until you're doing it. You don't know what you're going to be great at until you're doing it. So all that stuff is uh, also in the back of your head. Scary, too. Yeah. Uncharted no territory for you. No, it exciting. is scary. Yeah. It's a hard couple of years. Oh, yeah. believe me, I know, Chris. And no matter how you handle it, and I've heard this from everybody. I've heard it from you. I've heard it from Selleck. Like, no matter who you are, how well – you know, prepared you are to enter the next stage. Everybody goes through a a, a level of depression, really, or it is like ups, like you're 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 the end of what you. One of the things you love most in your life is is there, and you're gonna have to come to grips with that. I don't know what the five stages are off the top of my head of grieving, yeah. but <laughs> you know, I swear to you, denial, I I, uh, yeah, I, I think bargaining. I think you I think you go through <laughs> the five stages, dude, yeah. Yeah. with your career. Sure. Yeah. And I bet if I went back and looked at the last four or five years, I'd be like, yeah, that's where I was. That's where I was. That's where I was. <clears throat> and you're so equipped to think I'm okay. Yeah. You have to like convince yourself you're okay. You have to convince yourself as a football player, I can do this. Sometimes you're struggling. You don't even know it. Yeah. Yeah. Like the people around you know it, but you don't know it because you're like, survive, 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 yeah. survive, survive. 
Well, I kind of equate it to this, Chris, and you've, you've been on different teams, so you, you've experienced this, but when you sign with different teams, you have to almost reinvent yourself. You have to figure out what your role is going to be on a new team. You have to make new friends, meet new teammates, kind of figure everything out. Uh, and that's how, that's how it's kind of been for me in retirement a little bit. You've got to reinvent yourself. You've got to understand what life's going to be like. And it's like going to, you know, it's a whole new and world. you got to understand other people. There's no Lane Johnsons at work. Yeah. And what do you like, – yeah. And maybe because you just said something that, so like every, every, you might be struggling and you don't know it. I feel like you struggle in football, but whenever you get a win or something, yeah. you get like that little shot. The victories of, are very victory. black and white. That's why Dopamine. you do it. Yeah. it, it you're like, I, I got it. Yes. I got it. And um, what are the victories? Oh, Hanging out with you your buddies so, in the Super so, Bowl. What so, are the victories? So, Hanging so that, out with your buddies so, in the Super Bowl, so, baby. Right? Such an, <laughs> but that's such an interesting question, Jason, because I think the best way I can describe it is, there are no big victories. The big victories are in your life. Like yeah. you're, you, you know, you're, you're, you're a parent. You're, a, you're. See a, your kids smile. You're, yeah, like they're every day. They're little things, but retirement's like this, and that's a challenge for a lot of guys. We're used to this yeah. and this. Yeah. And this and this, like week to week, season to season, practice to practice, yeah. dude. We're riding the wave. Yeah. And. We get these incredible highs, but we get the incredible lows. Sure. So when you walk out that door, you say, okay, you trade in the highs, mm -hmm. but you don't get the lows as much. Yeah. Not like the acute lows. Right. You just got to be better at this, which is a fucking challenge. I've always been terrible itself. at that. Yeah. I am, it's a challenge in and of I'm itself. I'm a big hit guy. I go. <laughs> but the reward is yeah. when you figure out how to live like this. Right. Yeah. Because if you can unlock that, like you're, you're like, I am happier than when I played football. You're going to miss football. Right. There's going to be playoff games and night and Sunday. Sunday night games where you're going to sit there and say, I can do what that guy's doing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but your body's usually playing a trick on you, right. you know, because <laughs> sitting on the couch, you, you feel great. But can you do all the things that, that necessitates being a fo pro football player? If yeah. you're no longer able to wake up and be excited about coming to work, then you don't have it in you. Yeah. Sure. You know, so. Speaking of waking up and getting excited to go to work, Kels, how exciting has the podcast been with uh, Travis this year? It's been great. It's been uh, our second year. I think, um, you know, we've, we've gotten a lot better at it, I think. Um, it's, I mean, you're no green light, but you guys are, you guys are no all question right. question about that. No, they're really good, man. <laughs> you, I feel like, uh, first of all, we have a tremendous team. Our input is very minimal. We just talk. They lay everything out for us. Intern Brandon does a phenomenal job. And I think it's been fun doing it another year um, and talking to my brother. And I've never, I haven't been this connected with Travis over the last two years since college. Yeah. And I think that that's been one of the best, probably the best thing of the podcast. It forces us, because we're brothers. Like before this, we would go months yeah. <laughs> on our own deal without talking to well, like, I mean, Chris like understands text, with Kyle. You, know, know? you, you would yeah. text, you, you would send like you know, a funny video or something like that, but truly like sit down and talk with him. It would be a long time. Yeah. Um, doing this once a week, we were going to sit down and talk and we were going to have very meaningful conversations, fun conversations, and really know where each of us are at in their lives. And that's the most fun part about it. Um, you know, it's 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 reached a higher level, uh, thanks to a lot of different factors, um, including my brother's love life. But I think, you know, it's it, it, it's fun to see people enjoy it, um, and it's fun to see where it's at. Yeah. So let's talk about that famous uh, girlfriends, uh, and everybody wants to know the answer. What do you think about Josh Allen's girlfriend? <laughs> <laughs> um, isn't she? Uh, who, who is she? Haley, Haley, Haley Stein, Seinfeld, Seinfeld. Seinfeld. And what does she do? She's an actress. Actress. True okay. Grit. True, True Grit. True Grit. Great movie. She's been in a lot of other. She's movies, in a lot of stuff. Think, yeah. But. All right. So last question for you, Jason Kelsey's been awesome with his time. Um, you know, for his boys, man, for his boys, we appreciate the dude. Yeah. Uh, what a guy. New Heights. It's awesome. What's who's a bucket list guest for you? And then I'll ask you for green light. Yeah. Who's a bucket list guest for you? Uh, I mean, my bucket list is green light. We need to get you guys on the show. Yeah, I think we're, we're funny you say that, Kels. <laughs> it is funny. <laughs> you swing say by that. That. Actually, though, I, uh, before we move on completely, I want to ask you what's the he's deal with go this in a second. Giant, creepy, golden baby situation. Oh, the trophy. Yeah, we yeah. just unveiled. So we're trying to do. I think it's creepy. I think it's awesome. Fan competitions and stuff like that. And uh, I'm going to win the baby. You got to win the baby. Baby Bo. That baby will stay with the show. Everybody who wins wow. a competition will be able to sign that baby. And they'll get a miniature 24 karat gold version of that baby. Oh, sick. 
Um, How's the resale value of yeah, something like that? I, I know. If we, it's well, creepy, bro. You look bolt, at it and it stares it's into your soul. It's a decent price for us. <laughs> that baby is 104 pounds, cast bronze. Um, I think all in, we're in the six figures trying to make that happen. I want that baby. <laughs> I'm gonna win that baby. <laughs> they have a budget for a golden baby. Yeah. No, it was my. Nobody else wanted to do this. <laughs> Travis is like, you're a moron for trying. Oh. <laughs> I don't get it. I don't know if I like it or not, but I'm gonna make that baby mine. I like it. I'm I gonna win the, the baby. And I saw it. Got to win a competition. Um. Bucket list guest for us on Greenlight, Danny DeVito. We were talking earlier oh, in the pod about, like, if you've ever been starstruck. Yeah. Uh, the only time I've ever been starstruck in my life, Kels and I came out, and we did a episode on It's Always Sunny, and they were great to us. It was really fun. But when, when kind of Rob was bringing us through the studio, introducing us to everybody, like, we met Caitlin, his wife, and yep. Charlie Day, and, like, everyone was so cool to us. And they was like, oh, I'll, I'll introduce you to Danny. And I'm like, oh, my God, Danny DeVito. And he comes out, he's wearing a bathrobe, and nothing else. No way. Danny DeVito in a bathrobe. The day before I got there, I didn't get to see that. Yeah, you didn't get to see Danny in the bathrobe. And, uh, and, but it wasn't even weird. It was like, oh, Danny DeVito's in a bathrobe. That's the most natural thing in the world. And he's this tall, dude. He's like, hey, Danny, nice to meet you. Like, firm handshake. And then just kind of 5'3", maybe, on a good day. Like a, like a roster height. And uh, Boston Scott. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Darren Sproles. And then uh, he just walked away in his bathrobe. And it was an incredible experience. I'd love to get Well, Danny work your DeVito. connections. Maybe we can get him on. Yeah. My answer is Willie Nelson. Everybody yeah. knows that. Uh, Jason. Uh, did he just do like, is, is he still touring? Or is he done? He's, he's, I saw him. Cause he just came to Philly and I missed he's it. He's still doing stuff because I went to the, I went to the, the 90th birthday party at, at the Hollywood Bowl this off season. Yeah. So he was doing songs up there, but it was dope. Dude, they had like everybody. You have a show lined up. Yeah. I would love to see Willie before. Let's go. Let's go. I got like. You should have gone to the Hollywood Bowl. It was incredible. My, what's your favorite? My favorite album of his is IRS tapes. Oh, Redheaded Stranger. That's a good one. Redheaded Stranger is the best country album of all time in my opinion the whole thing's a story the reason i like Incredible. irs tapes is just because it's just him yeah it's just acoustic and it feels like very yeah like i don't know intimate uh, i mean he's made I'll put that he's on made 200 albums they're all great man You're right imagine willie nelson at the sphere oh <laughs> all right guys jason kelsey everybody appreciate you coming by dog thanks, thanks for, for having me guys. yeah we love you man, love you, man. honor love you